welcome back today's topic is comparison of uh, features of digital LM with the uh, older generation release a quick recap of what we have discussed in the last class in the last lecture we have discussed about the operational characteristics of a digital connection we have seen that digital relays are more reliable and they are very flexible and they have better cost per benefit ratio and operational performance is very good for digital relays when compared to the older generation relays right and we have seen some other features also of digital relays where they excel when compared to the older generation release. Now, in this video lecture, we will discuss about a quick comparison of the futures of digital release with the previous generation ones. So, I hope that by the end of this lecture, you will be able to provide a list of comparison of futures of digital release with the older generation release of electromagnetic and also static release. I have, uh, I will start with this uh, comparison and at the end, I will give a glimpse of uh, structure of digital relay, which is required for your uh, next classes. Okay. So, this is the table which I have prepared. See, these are the first generation relays, electromechanical relays, right? Started somewhere in 1900s and somewhere in 1960s, static relays and over the 1980s with the processors coming into picture, digital relays are coming into picture, right? So, coming to the generation, if we talk about the technology which has been employed, we call them as generation, right? These were first generation relays, they prevailed for nearly 60 to 70 years. Even now, also in old machinery, we can find this electromechanical relays. And second generation relays, because of their lightweight, and because of the faster operation, they came into picture. They employ uh, diodes, etc. And these are digital relays, current generation relays. This 3G, 4G, 4th generation, 5th generation, they do all come under this particular one, digital relays. Okay. And principle of operation. The electromechanical relays, they used to have this concept of electromagnetic attraction and repulsion. You might be seeing so many types of these relays in your PSP of your first unit, I think. Balanced beam, attracted armature, induction disc, induction cup relays. All the things, if you can carefully see, the common thing is you will be having a armature, you will be having a magnet, and there will be an attraction or repulsion between these two. And based upon the actuating quantity, there will be a movement, which in turn gives a signal to the circuit breaker, right? So they do employ this electromagnetic attraction or repulsion in them. And the static relays, they use these diodes, transistors, advanced ICs are coming to picture. Whereas all the digital relays, they do have microprocessor along with the software. They do use uh, some coding techniques, algorithms what we call them. So these algorithms basically, these based upon the algorithm, based upon the program which you write, the digital relay operates and coming to components which are employed here uh, electromechanical relay as already mentioned there will be an armature armature will be there and field will be there right so discs induction discs electromagnets induction cups permanent magnets are also employed balanced beam all these things they are uh, predominant components of electromechanical relays whereas in static relays you can find resistors, inductors, capacitors, small ones. In the semiconductor devices like diodes, transistors, analog ICs, and predominantly comparators. Right? And in digital relay, you can find microprocessors, digital ICs, digital signal processors are also coming to picture. So, digital signal processor, DSP processors. So, all these are parts of digital relay. And coming to measuring mechanism, what here electrical quantities are converted into mechanical quantities just like your electromechanical thing so whatever the current which you let us suppose there is a current which is being to be sensed if the current is high then it will be converted into uh, 
a mechanical term, just like uh, it is being used to set up a magnetic field, and based upon that magnetic field, the armature will be moving, which means that your electrical quantity is converted into a mechanical quantity. Whereas in a static relay, it will be it won't be converted into mechanical thing, it will be just compared with a preset value. So there will be a level detection and comparison. And IC will be there, which basically measures these two signals and just gives out a one or zero a static relay. Whereas in digital relay, all the analog signals they will be converted into digital signals, digital data, and then transmitted. So you do have a analog to digital conversion here. And this digitalized data it will be processed through some software by with the help of some algorithms. So there is a clear distinction between the different generations of relays. And coming to the size of the relays, electromechanical relays, because of the bulky components, they use it to consume so much amount of space. So that's why they are considered to be bulky. And whereas the static relays, they use it to have very small semiconductor things, diodes, transistors. They use it to employ comparators. So that's why they were considered to be small. Digital relays, they are not that much small, are, uh, but when compared to the electromechanical relays, as I have shown you, they are small enough. And coming to the speed of response, since they do have moving devices and this, since they are very bulky, the speed of response is to be high. This is the one of the biggest advantages which is offered by the next generation relays. They are very fast, their operating time is very, very low. Within microseconds or milliseconds, they will sense an abnormality and they will indicate. That is an advantage, biggest advantage offered by the digital relays in the second generation. Even static relays also, they are very fast. And coming to timing, timers which they are employed. Here they used to have mechanical clocks and here static timers were employed. And here in all the digital relays, counters are being employed. And regarding the reliability, the older generation relays used to be very reliable, even though they are very slow, even though they are very bulky, but they were highly reliable. Because static relays, they do, even though they are very fast enough, they are of lightweight, they had this problem of low reliability because they are susceptible to temperature changes and also mechanical stresses. So any of these things, immediately the reliability was very low. The efficiency was very very low. Even a slight change in temperature also, there was a huge deviation in the performance. Even a slight mechanical stress also, the operating characteristics used to change. So that's fine. Despite their low cost, despite their flexibility, despite their speed, static relays are considered to be less reliable. Whereas a digital relay, it overcomes all these problems of static relay. Since it, it is not sensitive to temperature, not sensitive to mechanical stress, Huge mechanical stress, it will defaultly affect the performance. But normal mechanical stress temperatures, they don't affect a digital relay. So that's fine. They are reliable. They are considered to be reliable. And coming to impact of mechanical stress, it is minimum. High, very high in static relays, it is considerably high. But not that much like deviation in the characteristics. And next is CT burden. You know that... Uh, let us suppose if some 10 kilo amperes is going through the transmission line. If you feel that 11 k, 11 kilo amperes is considered as a fault, it doesn't mean that you place an ammeter there to measure this 10 kilo amperes, right? You will be using a current transformer. So, current tran potential transformers do offer us very good advantages that you can scale down the actual quantities and that can be measured with the low rating devices. And uh, this burden of this CTs or PTs, this is one of the most important thing which affects the performance of relays. Coming to electromechanical relays, the CT burdens are very high. They can be of the range of 10 so PA. Whereas in case of static relay, they need only minute current, so low PA. And digital relays, they still they do have very low CT burdens. And the range of settings, these of a very wide range of settings, whereas electromechanical relays, they are very limited range of settings and their functions are also very limited. They have very single function. Static relays are also mostly single function, 
But whereas this digital relay, which use microprocessors with a dedicated memory, and nowadays advanced microprocessors, they offer very high multifunctions. And coming to programming, electromechanical relay, there is no concept of any programming or self monitoring, right? Whereas in static relay, partially you can program and uh, they are self monitored. But whereas digital relay, they are highly programmable, they are multifunctional and self monitoring also. So, with this, I hope that you can, uh, you have now understood what is the difference between the earlier generation relays and the static relays and digital relays. And we will move on to digital relays in detail in the next class. But before that, I would like to introduce you a simple concept of digital relays. A quick review. Digital relay basically employs a microprocessor along with the memory. And all the analog data, it will be digitalized and then processed there itself, maybe to filter out something, etc, etc. That we will see in the next class. So, the data is then sent to the microprocessor, wherein you will be having some softwares. It is not just the software, right? It is you need to write a program. So, for that you do need an algorithm and uh, program. So, once you do this, so this digitalized data, it will process it through this one and then you will get your data which, which you will sense and that signal is sent back to your CB. This is the process. So, what are the important things in your digital relay? One is data conversion from again here to D to A, data converters, processes, this hardware and software. So, a digital relay consists of majorly hardware and also software. It is not just the soft hardware. In electromechanical relays, you don't have a software. You just do have this hardware, right? Whereas in digital relays, you do need a software also. This software decides your characteristics of your digital relay and also the functions of it. If you want to have an overcurrent or undercurrent or over voltage or an impedance based, all these things, it depends upon your software and algorithm which you write. So, the significance of algorithm. You know it very well when compared to me, the significance of algorithm, right? So, what actually is an algorithm? It is just like a set of instructions which are basically employed to clear a particular function. So, an algorithm is basically a part of your software. It is just like some basic thing based upon which you will be writing your program, right? It just consists of some mathematical instructions. And these mathematical instructions, what you will do, they will be used to process your yeah, input currents or voltages. And based upon that, these things, if you process through an algorithm, you will know what are the RMS values and you will know what is your measured impedance, frequency, differential currents. And based upon that, these things are obtained and based upon this, you will compare them with some preset values or these values itself. And based upon that, you will be sensing, you will be deciding whether the system is sound or faulty. And if found faulty, then action is initiated. See a series of steps. First, write a code, process these things identify the important things and then you compare it then if you find faulty then action is initiated right so what are the types of algorithms which you do generally employ in digital list there are so many wide variety of algorithms which we will see in unit number two the commonly found thing is sinusoidal waveform based algorithms and next we do have Fourier series Fourier transforms and wall space techniques and we do have least square methods which are widely used in numerical relays and differential equation solutions and traveling wave based methods also. We will see these two in unit number two and this thing in unit number four. Okay, so we will learn about few algorithms how to process the data, how to determine the peak value of a waveform when you do get a digital data. Okay, so that we will see. So I hope that now you are uh, got good information. As already mentioned, digital lists they do offer many benefits regarding reliability, performance, flexibility, cost, operations, etc.
and I hope that now you are able to clearly list the features of digital release and compare them with the earlier generation release and these are the practice questions compare the features of electromechanical and digital release okay so additional learning for you if you want to go through go through them and we'll discuss further more in the class thank you